that you all have joined us on this um, Saturday morning. Happy, happy, happy New Year. Are y'all ready for 2024? Hi, Carolyn. Good morning to everyone. Happy New Year. <laughs> you got you got the rough uh, wake up uh, voice this morning. <laughs> That's all right. I'm it's getting it up. It's eight thirty, <laughs> but I'm keeping it. <laughs> I am also um, streaming this live through Facebook. Um, again, we're trying to get everybody in the game early. So we have some old old alumni as well as some new ones. And it's all about um, understanding who we have in the community. So can you all go around and introduce yourself, where you're from, and how'd you hear about us? I'll start. So I'm Terry King, I'm owner of Terry King Commercial. We are a full service real, commercial real estate brokerage. Um, we specialize in a retail office and uh, land leasing and sales. Um, and I heard about you guys at uh, the Atlanta Business League. Ms. Paula and I met on uh, Super Tuesday last year. Okay, welcome, Terry. Welcome to the community. Thank you. Um, uh, Nikita, please introduce yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I'm the only one brave enough to show my face this morning, but it's all good. It's Saturday, it is cold, but go ahead. <laughs> um, yes. So, I'm Nikita. I am from White Plains, Maryland, and I um, was given your class information by Kimberly Lampkins. Um, and I'm excited to be here and learn about the contracting world. So yeah. and what's your I have a contractor now. And, you know, of course, uh, the greater goal would be to have my own contracting business. And what's your background and what? Um, my background is management analyst, um, analyst or I guess, yeah, administrative support field okay. for federal uh, contracts. Yes. Well, thank you. Welcome. 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 Thank you, thank Kimberly, you. for inviting her. But uh, Katrina Johnson, please introduce yourself. Ms. Johnson, you can unmute yourself. While we're waiting on Ms. Johnson to unmute themselves. Um, Jay Hill, please introduce yourself. All right. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Hi, uh, I'm Jamar Hill. I'm here with my wife, uh, Jamila Hill. Um, we're in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we're interested and excited to learn more about the federal contracting world uh, as well. So thanks for having us. And what's your background? And how'd you um, hear about us? My background, <laughs> I'm <am> an entrepreneur. <laughs> I know that's that's vague, uh, but developmental disabilities uh, agency, staffing agency for develop, developmental disabilities. Um, and my wife, she's a RNDS and she works in insurance. Okay, and how do you hear about us? Uh, we were referred by um, a lady we met at a Panera Bread. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so. GPI Panera Bread in Ohio. <laughs> So I, <laughs> I love it. Well, welcome. Welcome to the community. Tamika, please introduce yourself. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, my name is Tamika Nance. I am in the Atlanta area. Uh, I follow you guys on Facebook and LinkedIn. So I see all your announcements and it's 2024, so I told myself this is the year I'm going to launch my business, and I wanted to learn more about federal contracting and see if that's a way and also to bring in business. And my background is project management and okay. financial analysis. I so, love it. Welcome to the PM. community. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Um, Carmen Phillips, please introduce yourself. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carmen Phillips. 
and um, I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay. And my background is in real estate and case management. I'm a broker. And how did I hear about you? Um, a friend recommended me to to the program. Okay. That um she she's already did the program and she said it was really good. Um, I wouldn't waste my time or money, so she recommended it. Okay, well, thank you, Carmen. Welcome to the community. Thank you. Kimberly D. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kimberly Dawkins. I am a, uh, I reside here in Hollywood, Maryland, Southern uh, St. Mary's County. Uh, I work as a realtor sales agent here in the DMV area. I also have um, recently been introduced to uh, the insurance industry. So I'm working on that. Um, I had come across uh, your website through, uh, well, not your website, but just the information through uh, YouTube videos. So I thought I would hop on this morning um, as I'm interested in some federal contracting opportunities. Well, thank you for joining, joining us. Um, Ms. Hamilton, please introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Scott Bashassi Boy Hamilton. I reside in Henry County, uh, Georgia, down in McDonough. Um, I have a uh, I have a company uh, which is called Aviation Discoveries. So I am a pilot and I teach children or encourage them into getting into careers in aviation. Mm -hmm. A friend recommended uh, me to you guys this morning, just a few minutes ago. So I'm grateful to be here. Oh, thank you. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, thank you. Ms. Uh, J.F. just joined us. J.F., please introduce yourself. J.F.? All right. Ms. Johnson, are you, can you unmute yourself? All right. Kimberly Lumpkin, my grateful friend who's ready to she, have you officially retired? Are you ready to jump in? As far as I'm concerned, I did. I'm on leave two weeks, and the 26 is it. All right. God. Congratulations. Thank you. On your retirement. Um, Kimberly, can you share your background and, again, how you've come across um, GPI? Okay. Well, I have been involved with GPI since 2016. And I just retired from CDC and I've just basically, and, and I've done a number of things over the years of working for the government. And um, I finally have retired so that I can uh, go after these government contracts. I've been waiting was this, well, like I said, since 2016 and I'm, I came across GPI from working with a contractor that got a contract at CDC. And one of the things that I always say is, I've been there so long, I never saw people of color winning contracts at CDC. Mm. And I ask, how did you do this in the rest of this history? <laughs> well, thank you, Ms. Ms. Kimberly. Now it's time to put everybody on steroids this year. Um. I'm excited. I just I just spent two weeks in Jamaica, so I'm fresh, ready to go, and ready to create some more millionaires this year. Are y'all in? Is that a go? I'm all in. <laughs> ready. <laughs> all right. Let's just go ahead and jump into today's presentation. I have a lot of information to cover, but um, the goal is this, this webinar is primarily to just to give you a short overview of government contracting, as well as our program. Um, make sure I have the right uh, web up, yes. We are Government Procurement Innovators, your solution to federal contracting. I'm gonna continue to prep this as this based on we this this executive order is still active um but while and while it's active before the election we need to all understand the importance of taking advantage of what our president has done for us and what he's done is 
issued an executive order requiring um, agencies to increase their contract awards to minority-owned businesses. We, they know, we know that the field has never been fair. So this was a way for the president to at least try to impact our communities through these contracts, as well as what he did um, during the pandemic and getting those types of um, loans that was issued. Did anyone get any um, any of that economic injury, injury disaster loan? Anybody online? Did you all get it, receive any of that money? All right, nobody received it, but that was a good thing because that put juice into a lot of businesses, including my business. <laughs> to begin with, I like to always start off with my background and how I really got into this space. Originally, I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. After college, um, I went to Washington, D.C., and my first job was with a company that was a part of the 8A program. How many of you have heard of the 8A? This is going to be an interactive web webinar. Uh, how many of you have heard of the 8A program? Okay, we've got a couple yeah. of people we have heard. Thank you. Um, this uh, My first job was with a company that was a part of the program doing event planning. I ended up attaching myself to that one contract, and I went through five 8A companies every three years um, before I decided to cut out the middleman and start my first business. I started my first business in 1996, first year in business. I won my first million-dollar contract, second year in business. I applied into the 8A program won another $3 million contract and quickly grew the business in a short period of time to almost $15 million in contract with almost 40 employees. And that's really where my challenge began because I really didn't have a clue of what I was doing. Meaning I went from a project manager to running a small business, a multi-million dollar company. Um, I had two partners, one who felt like they could run their personal expenses through the company. I ended up um, having his account audited. He threatens my assistant. I end up terminating him. He conspired with two employees to sue me and the other partner for sexual harassment. After two years of attorney fees, $125,000 in attorney fees, $100,000 to buy them out. I had no more operating cash. So I ended up shutting the business down in 2005 um, and, and realized that no one was training small businesses on how to manage a business. So I volunteered for two years as a score counselor, which is a resource partner of SBA, ran out of money, applied for a position with SBA to work as a business opportunity specialist servicing participants in SBA's 8A program. For those of you who don't know about that program, we'll go into more depth about that shortly. I started out in Philadelphia, which was the area that actually, I mean, the office that actually processed all the applications. So I was able to get a clear understanding of what they were looking for and how and why they were declining participants applying into their program. But my job primarily was to service them once they got into the program. While in the program, I was certified as a contract specialist. And for me, it brought everything in full circle, meaning I managed the business for 10 years. Uh, I'd worked with SBA for seven years, but I wasn't quite sure how these agencies actually put their solicitations out for you to compete on. So um, understanding that, that made sense to me. 
So I left SBA in 2015. We've trained more than 10,000 businesses on how to market to the federal government. And I need to update that last bullet where it says assisted small businesses to win over 1.5 billion in contracts across the various industries. I've also self-published a book called That's Crazy, Recognize Crazy and Run. Um, it somewhat describes some of the challenges I've had in that business, but the names have been changed to protect the innocent. So when you look at trying to get into this space and understanding what I was seeing specifically while working at SBA, I began to understand the challenges that people were, were having. Meaning if I hosted a workshop at SBA, people will leave out and it's great information. Everyone's excited. Um, we tell you to go to the resource partners uh, to get more information. A lot of times you spend a lot of wasted time because no one really understands SBA's regulations. And unless you have worked on the inside of SBA, I will consistently say no one understands them. And they're a major part in this, uh, in this area. And it's the same with the government agencies. No one really understands how SBA operates. So what are some of the barriers that happens for a small businesses entering into the space. First thing is understanding the government language. Oftentimes when you go to some of these events with the government, they're speaking in acronyms and they're, they're assuming that you understand what they're talking about. Understanding the government process. What steps do they actually take to uh, or what steps you need to understand to get into this game. Understanding how you determine what certifications you qualify for. And based on that understanding, well, what supporting doc documentation is SBA looking for? Also understanding no one talks to each other in this space as it relates to these agencies, meaning, um, GSA has their own website, which manages the registration processes for small businesses. And then SBA have their own website. So there's a big disconnect between everyone. And that really was the purpose of me coming out and creating a training program where it made sense, where people could walk through this process step by step. And this program, was based on a combination of several things. Lessons learned in that first business and what I saw working with many of the firms at SBA and the challenges they were having. So the first lesson learned and what I tell businesses is not to limit your business. When I started that first business, I was marketing it as an event planning company and my mentor pulled me aside and he said, why are you pigeonholing yourself? And when he said that, it made sense based on what I'd seen in those five companies that I'd gone through. In this space, everyone is primarily management consultant. So I changed my business model. Instead of marketing it as an event planning company, I created divisions administrative division, an IT division, a publication division, a database division. And once I created those divisions, I started receiving contracts in those areas. What I realized is we're working with a lot of small businesses and, and, and even SBA's partners. They'll tell you, start your business on your skill set, start state and locally, and because you're not ready for the federal. And I completely disagree with that. Um, once I won that first contract, I was no longer doing my skill set in event planning. I had to manage the business and grow the business. And that's the hardest challenge for everyone entering in this space. So in our first module, which is business ready, 
we teach you how to become a CEO and help you to understand that you don't have to know anything about that contract area to win that contract. Um, we're going to preach today. Can I get an amen on that? <laughs> yeah? Amen. 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 Not amen. about your business. It's about you managing your business. We have a couple of real estate um, agents and brokers online. If you can just remove that task, I mean, that title, and think about all the tasks associated with completing the sale of that home. You have facility support. You're dealing with janitors. You're dealing with uh, painters, roofers. You have to do marketing. You're doing social media. <laughs> You're doing records management. So it's helping you all to understand how you transfer what you're already doing into a business model where you're going to get paid more money. Amen for the church. <laughs> Amen. Also in this space, understand that collaboration is key. SBA's programs, as well as these contracts, require us to collaborate. The challenge is we don't understand how to collaborate. So in the second part of the program, we put you into teams so you can understand the power of collaboration. When I look at the number of people who are currently online, that's a contract. You can get a piece of it. I can get a piece of it. And everybody is fed. It's understanding the power we have within, but we've been giving it away to everyone for so long. My goal is to create millionaires and create generational wealth. This is the pathway for that generational wealth. And I say that because my mentor got into the 8 day program, and in six years, he built up his business and sold it for $27 million. So I need for you all to think big. I think big. <laughs> you must have the infrastructure in place when you're beginning to get into this space. Does anyone know what I mean by infrastructure? Anybody? Y'all real quiet this morning. Work with me. Uh, like process, procedure, um, the who does what and when and how. Okay, thank you. That's a good answer. Anybody else? I'm thinking about uh, maybe systems such as accounting, business development, things like that. Exactly. <laughs> accounting, SOPs, attorneys. You heard I was sued. <laughs> Meaning, I didn't know enough to protect myself. And when you're in business, it's all about legal. So if you have any employees, you need to make sure when you start hiring employees, you need to make sure that you have this insurance called Employment Practice Liability Insurance, EPLI. Had I had that insurance, it would have covered the lawsuit and the attorney fees. So it's things that people don't tell you um, or it didn't tell me when I started that business. So for me, we are, we are taking a holistic approach. It's just not about you um, participating in the program and understanding how to compete on contracts because unless you understand the infrastructure required for you to support those contracts is not going to work. Does that make sense to everybody? Ms. King raised her hand. What question do you have? Uh, would you mind repeating the name of that insurance? Employment Practice Liability Insurance. People think um, you have that coverage when you have your just general business liability under an umbrella. That's a separate insurance policy that you have to have that's not a part of that umbrella. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. 
Okay. Does anyone know when the government's fiscal year starts and when does it end? October 1st through September 30th. That is correct. Very good. So from a business perspective, there's a um, there's a time that you need to position yourself to start marketing for the government. Because what happens um, September 30th and October 1st, most of the time Congress has not passed the budget. So these agencies are operating on what they call a limited, I'm on a continuing resolution, meaning they have limited budget. So most of the time during this time, would you agree with me, Kimberly? These agencies are really sitting around twirling their hand, waiting on the money. Yes, ma'am. It, it is the downtime. So that's the time that you really want to begin to start getting in front of those buyers, building those relationships before they get their funding. Generally, um, can you estimate this, um, Kimberly, for me, if the continuing resolution right now, I think, is scheduled to go through February uh, 2nd. When does the agency actually receive that money after they pass the budget? How long thereafter? It's about a month, about a month or so. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so from, let's say they pass it in February, they don't get their money to March and it's still drilling, drilling down. So from April to September, y'all think about it, it's a short period of time to get rid of a whole lot of money. So your goal is to get in front of that and start building those relationships. So by the end of what we call Christmas season in DC, you at least have built some relationships, understand the process. Why federal contracts? Every year, SBA sets aside goals for each of these agencies meaning 23% of contracts have to be set aside specifically for small businesses. 5% if you're woman-owned, 5% for participants in the 8A and or small disadvantaged businesses, 3% for service disabled veteran-owned, and 3% for hub zone businesses. And SBA grades the agency each year on how they fared in meeting those goals. So some of the strategy that we teach is maybe targeting these agencies that did not meet their goals. But if you look over here, um, it was a lot, a lot of money, which was awarded to each of the set aside programs uh, at SBA. So what does that really mean for you? Let's say you market an agency and they award you a contract for $100,000. That agency now gets credit for that $100,000 and you being a small business. Now, let's say you're a small business woman owned. Now that agency gets $200,000 credit towards their goals. So the more certifications you have, you're helping those agencies achieve their goals. I um, I pulled out this data because this is truly a data, I mean, a program to my heart that they are really trying to destroy just based on that um, ruling in the summer. But I wanted you all to get uh, understanding the value of this program. This is a program that's designed to build your business for nine years. So I went to this website, USA Spending, and we'll go through that shortly. So you can get a, a general idea of the types of contracts or, or what agencies were awarding in this program and the dollar amount. I've also included the top 10 industries. So we're all about strategy here. We're all about shaping a business model 
around um, where the money is, where the contracts are being awarded. I also pulled this report, which was issued in 2022, because working at SBA, I really <laughs> began to understand where the challenges were. Oh, it's cold out here. Huh? Um, I am. Um, I, I looked at this report, and it, it told it told a story of the value of this program. And uh, this report was issued by the uh, Office of Inspector General. And what the Office of Inspector General does, they come in and examine what, where we were falling short or if we had any shortcomings in the program and servicing businesses under this program. So you can see right here, the $34 billion that was awarded in 2020 in this program, and $11 billion went as sole source, and we'll talk about sole source shortly. But what I realized working with SPA, uh, and I pulled some of this data from that report, I realized people outside of that DMV area really didn't have a clue of government contracting and this particular program, just based on the number of businesses that were uh, that had were included in this A day program. So, if you look at these numbers here, does this tell you all anything? And this is based on contracts that were awarded here in Georgia. What story does this tell you guys? Y'all don't see the story? Plenty of room for me. No competition. <laughs> right? You got 41% of the contracts um, was D.C. I mean, actually, Virginia. So you have businesses from Virginia coming to D.C. I mean, coming here to Georgia and winning contracts. The Georgia firms, and I pulled this data last night, um, in the last, in 2023, only received 3% of contract awards in this program. Er, uh, all these other states, and I just chose the, the top six, were receiving the most contract awards. That doesn't make sense to me. And I realized that while I was working at SBA, because I was responsible for servicing 40 businesses. And if you look at this analysis, you can tell um, that you really, people, when they get into that program thinking that we're going to provide you with all this support and you're going to get all th these contracts. And that's nice, but that's not reality because working there in that position, we didn't have the time. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the time to provide the business development for those firms getting into that program. And most of those uh, firms did not receive their first contract until their fourth or fifth year. My goal, for, my goal through our program is that you're walking in the door with guns. You're not wasting any time. Um, this was previous years where I did the same analysis um, with neighboring states. So what I would tell the businesses here in Georgia, you might want to look at some contracts in Alabama. Less competition. There's only 58 businesses in the entire state that's a part of this program. And that's my goal, is to increase the numbers because this program really was designed for minority-owned businesses, but we don't know anything about it or how to get engaged. Um, in Florida, I would say it's dominated by my Latino brothers and sisters. They understand the game, they collaborate, and they just keep rolling out, building generational wealth. So this is the website where opportunities are posted. Sam.gov. Um, I don't usually use this website. It's, it's kind of throws out a lot of junk, but I wanted you to get a view 
or a visual of the opportunities that have been posted just, just as, as of yesterday. And what I find is on the federal side, you're not competing with as many businesses. If I'm in Georgia and I see a contract in California, I can compete on that contract. You're not pigeonholing yourself. So that's why I say it doesn't make sense to start with state, state and local because you're competing with a lot more people and you have a better chance on the federal, specifically because they um, set aside contracts specifically for small businesses. Those are the buys that are 250000 and below. It makes sense to everybody. As an example, I pulled this back in November. This was an opportunity um, that had been posted for the Library of Con Congress. Um, retail shop supplies, right? This is what the government's looking for a contractor to buy. Do I need to be in the retail shop to go after this bid, anyone? No, you don't need to be in the... No. So it's shifting your mindset. If you do, you know, those of y'all that do event planning, you do parties, right? You do family parties. You're getting these same items. So you're just um, providing, um, you're providing numbers to the government. <laughs> um, this is what they're looking for. The thing is, it's in volume. So here, they're asking you to provide your costs for each of these different types of bags. So you're putting your costs on top of your quotes. That's how you're making the money. This right here, um, what they're asking for, they're always clear on their instructions. They only, here they just wanted a sample. Um, you may, you, may not as a business have what they call past performance, meaning where have you done this previously? You're gonna be able to use personal, you can use um, that vendor's experience. This is all only thing that they were looking for you to supply in this particular quote. Um, they're telling you the instructions. I like HUD. HUD always updates their forecasts. In this space, um, the forecast is update is what the government's anticipating awarding in that fiscal year. Um, Terry, you had a question before I go any further? Yes. Um, you mentioned that um, for past performance, we will be able to um, use our vendor. So in that example, I find a, a, a balloon vendor um, and do I disclose that I'm going to be using balloon vendor Bob in it and balloon vendor Bob has done a thousand parties? Yes. Okay. Yes. You're getting their reference because that's what you're doing. You have to screen the vendors for the government. And your role in this capacity is project management. And you're in real estate, right, Terry? Yes, but I do have a background in project management uh, also. I can do this. <laughs> so, and when I'm telling all of the real estate agents, if I can get y'all just to remove that title and think about your life before real estate, <laughs> everything that you've done in your whole life, now you can apply into this space as a management consulting firm. That makes sense to everyone? Yes. Forecast that HUD um, every month will update their forecast. And the forecast is projecting what they're anticipating spending in that fiscal year. The reason I like HUD is because uh, this allows you to get ahead of the game, meaning they're going to tell you when they anticipate it being posted on SAM.gov, when they anticipate the award. 
and how long that contract is. I like everything that says new contract because that means um, there's no previous vendor that worked on that contract. So you get a better chance in winning. So when you're looking at this example, the government need retirement plans and they've given you a general value and they're giving you a contact. So you can't talk to these individuals um, once it's posted and advertised. So your goal right now is to get ahead of it and count, contact Ms. Lawrence Wilson and ask uh, how many um, retirement plaques are you anticipating so that you can go ahead and get your quotes before it's posted. And you can also see that these individuals are managing multiple contracts. So your goal is to your goal is to um, build those relationships. Does that make sense? Anybody have any question? Y'all quiet for me, but that's okay. We can keep going. A, oh, I have a question, Ms. Paula. Um, so you were saying that before it's, it's posted, how can we tell um, that we're it's the right phase to contact them? Like, where do we see that? Like, okay, this is posted or it's in a phase now. It's that right. It'll be on sam.gov. Oh, so once it's on sam.gov, we can't contact them. We can't contact them. Okay, so where do we go to find the pre-listing? The what? Like the like the pre-listing. So where will we go to find out like this is like this phase that you're showing us here? Right, uh, it's it's on this right website, and this is the person that you would reach out to. Does that make sense? Did yeah. I answer your question? Thank you. Okay. That's why there's no need to pigeonhole yourself based on your skill set, right? Most of our community, we tend to want to push our children to become the LeBron and Stefan. And I want you, I want us to think of it differently. If LeBron and Stefan is making $200 million in contracts, <laughs> And the owner, uh, how much is the owner making? And does he need to know anything about basketball, anybody? What's his goal? What's the owner's goal at the end of each year? Someone. Make huh? money. 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 And how, is he, and, how, and how is he going about doing it? Getting more players. He's getting his dream He's getting his dream team, his five best players. So that's how you're going to build your business model. It's not on your skill set. It's based on who you know in those areas that have the expertise that you can put on a contract. Does that make sense to y'all? Yeah? It does. Yes, it does. Okay. I got a quick question. Yes, ma'am. So you, you're saying this. So let's just say we find a pest control um, contract out there. You're saying build a relationship with a pest control company that you value, trust, you screen, and then submit them in your bid. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think people get so intimidated because of the government. But once you understand the government is uniform and once you understand their process, it's not that intimidating. I promise you. So in order to get into this game, you have to self-certify into this database, System for Awards Management. This is also the database where they're posting opportunities. You can self-certify as a small business as, and as a small disadvantaged business. Um, right now, these four programs are now formal certifications, meaning you have to submit an application to SBA and be approved by SBA. The 8A program is a business development program. The Hub Zone program is a program designed to build communities. 
The women-owned small business is just what it is, and the service-disabled veteran-owned small businesses are just, it's just what it is. So when you look at uh, the 8A program, and I say this because, again, I grew up in this program. I lived and breathed through this program because I understood as that 25-year-old that this was the key, especially up in D.C. Everybody was 8A contracting. And this was the only program that allows you to go to any federal agency and they can award contracts up to $4 million in, in one single award with no competition. That's called sole source. Can I get a church, uh, uh, amen from the church? I don't think y'all heard what I just said or comprehended what I just said. Did y'all comprehend what I just said? Oh, we got it. <laughs> what did you get? What did you get? What did you get? Hmm? I get that we need to jump on this ASAP. That's what I got. <laughs> no, no, we don't want to put you in that program because you heard me earlier saying that most of them didn't get in there. I mean, once they got into the program, no one knew what to do with the program. And they wasted four or five years. And you only have one time to be in this program. So what I'm also helping you to do is once you graduate and this is how you stay in 18 years. You want to always make sure you're bringing someone along, even if it's, if you're married. Uh, we have a married couple on here. Both of y'all should have two separate entities so that when one graduates, another can apply. And now you have 18 years. Oh, wow. Mm, I'm giving y'all game. I don't, I'm not getting nothing from the church this morning. <laughs> So in case? other words, what you're saying, this piece, I'm sorry, I have a, uh, yeah. this for clarification. Um, what's standing out uh, for me is this non-competitive mm -hmm. piece here. Um, so it's that's telling me that this allows us on a federal level to not have to go out there and compete with the big boys, if you will. That is correct. Okay. And that relationships with these, I guess these procurement officers or whatever mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. And that what you're saying also um, that just jumped out at me is collaborating. Mm -hmm. It didn't occur to me that I didn't realize that you could have a relative. It may mm -hmm. be a, a spouse or maybe mm -hmm. an adult child. So mm -hmm. I, I like that piece as well. That's right. To That's carry this on. Okay. That's the generational wealth. That's the generational wealth. And um, my question about this, Ms. Paula, is um, so if I am joint venturing with other small businesses um, and we each we each have one or we go after it separately, um, does it does it count? Like so for my business, if I got an 8A and then I'm joint venturing with other small businesses, um, can we get the 8A like if for that joint venture like that? Yes, part yes, yes, that's what a joint venture will do. Now you get their certification, and that's some of the game that we teach in the program. Mm -hmm. How do you team and learn on somebody else's dime? So when you get ready to apply into that program, you understand the game, and you're taking full advantage of the nine years. So would that be the same as partnering? Yes. It's prime and self-contracting. We go into details in, in the program. We cover all of that. Okay. Okay. The hub zone does not have a term limit on it. It's based on where your business is located. And 35% of your employees residing in a hub zone area it doesn't have to be the same area of your business, but just as long as they reside in a hub zone. So have you um um remember what Magic Johnson did? What did Magic Johnson do somebody? The movie theaters, I think, right? Correct. He ended up going into urban areas, building movie theaters, Starbucks, and now he's having them and hiring from within the community. That's the same purpose of this program on the federal side. For the 8A program, previously, before 
that court ruling in June to meet the social component, um, as long as you were a member of any one of these ethnic groups, you automatically met the social component and a U.S. citizen. Now, what has occurred is that you now have to provide a narrative on how you've been discriminated against here in America. Um, that's why I'm saying I have a sense of urgency because we've got to become knowledgeable and understanding the game <laughs> because they are trying to remove us, our history, <laughs> our work. And I, I'm not going down with a fight. So I want y'all to be able to fight with me to win in these contracts. So this is as crazy as it is. It is what it is. But this is now the new component of uh, understanding um, whether or not you've been discriminated against. SBA also is going to look at your economic network. It cannot exceed $850,000 minus any equity in your home and in your business. So if you have rental properties, that equity, the equity in those properties will be counted against you. Also, those of you that are in that real estate industry, for this program, it does not allow you to qualify coming in as a real estate agent or broker. So what I'll tell you is that for your oh, tax your tax returns going forward, you need to um use this industry code 541611. That's the management consulting code. You're going to see that on your tax return in the le left hand cor left hand corner. You want to make sure when you file your taxes this year, you're using that industry code rather than that real estate agent broker code because they do not allow brokers or agents into the program. Ms. Parlor, can you repeat the code? 541 611. Okay. Thank you. The other component of this, um, this is another way that um, our community can come together again, based on that justice system. If you have a record, but you're not on parole or probation, you can apply into this program and start a business. That's another avenue for those who have touched that justice system to come out and provide for their family because most of them um, was in there based on economic reasons. So it's just giving them another avenue of hope and understanding that they can change and, and get into the game. The HUDZONE program um, purchases over 3,000, again, no term limit, you reset certify every year. In this program, you also get the advantage of sole source contracts and competitive contracts for with other businesses in this program. The difference in the sole sourcing in this program in the as opposed to the 8A, in order for an agency to award a sole source contract under this program the government has to make sure that there are two companies that are qualified to perform on that contract. That's called the rule of two. If they determine they have two, con uh, two vendors that are qualified, they then can award a sole source contract to one of the two. You also get what they call a 10% price evaluation preference, meaning 10% um, will be added on um, another business's cost if they're not a part of the program. The rule is your principal office must be in a hub zone and 35% of your employees must live in a hub zone. 
And hub zone does not necessarily always have to mean the hood. When you look at um, where SBA's office here in Georgia, it's on Peach Street, right? Uh, up the street from the office, you have the Ritz-Carlton, you have the Marriott, you have the Hilton. But that address and that location is considered a hub zone because there was a shelter in that area. The hub zone map and area is um, determined by um, the Census Bureau um, every 10 years. This is the map that you can put in to determine whether or not you you live in a hub zone. So if you have a home-based business and you're the only employee of that business, can you qualify into that program somewhat? That's a question. Can you repeat the question? If you're a home-based business and your business is in a hub zone, you're the only employee of that business. Can you qualify into this program? Yes. 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 You meet the 35% eligibility. Once you put it in, this is what will come up. And you can see you can go across the street uh, and it's not a, a, a hub zone. The women's program is um, at this database, and that's where the confusion comes in. So you're registering in SAM first before you can even begin to go to SBA's database. They're not connected. This is the website for the women's program. Once you, uh, the women's program is broken into two components, economically disadvantaged and WOSB. You don't have to apply into both. If you apply um, for the economically disadvantaged, you're automatically qualified as a WOSB. So this is the website that you go to apply for that program. Um, SBA also have a third party certifier that you can um, pay to do the certification. But through our program, you're going to go through the stuff. You're going to understand what documents that you can uplift and certify yourself. Um, and for me, it's important that you understand what you're giving or what you're uploading. Um, because the information you give into that third party certifier is uploading it into the same database. So understanding what SBA is looking for. These are the requirements for this um, program. No minimum amount of time in business, um, require full time doing normal working hours. But again, there's loopholes around there based on your industry. Let's say you are IT or even, again, um, janitorial services. That does not fall in. Your services don't fall in the normal working hours. You must hold the highest position. Uh, you have to be in control. You cannot lie to the government. <laughs> when this program uh, first became law, I was at SBA. And it was all the husbands calling, trying to see how they can make their wives um, in the position to manage that company, uh, that com company, so that they could have access to these contracts. We don't play that kind of games. We want you all to be clean when you're going in. The veteran. Do we have any veterans online? Yes. Um, thank you for your service. And we appreciate that. Um, veterans program, again, is another program that allows sole source. Now it is um, all been passed over to SBA. They grandfathered uh, those who had come under the veterans uh, VA certifications into SBA's program, but you still have to go and apply under SBA's 
vehicle, I mean, under their portal. Um, again, the qualification, all of it is 51% owned and controlled. Even again, if you have veterans who have disabilities, they can um, point someone to manage their business. Um, and uh, I'm going to uh, give you all that that link where well, I gave you the CR code so that you can get a general. Uh, we can actually go to the website because there's a lot of things that they're requiring and, and updating in this program. Um, there's a checklist. You got to create an account. So it's all a process. And this is some of the things that we'll walk you through as you complete our program. Before I go into the actual program, I wanted to take you to a couple of websites. And I am sensitive at everyone's time on um, everyone's time. But, and if you need to leave, we can go. <laughs> this, this database right here is SAM.gov. So that you can get a general idea of the opportunities that are posted. Generally, I don't like using this database. I use another database that's a little more user-friendly. And I wanted you to get a general idea of the types of contracts that are out there. Um, I put in catering, just catering na nationally. Right now, there are almost 24 contracts for catering opportunities. Do I need to know how to cater? Anybody? No, 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 you just got to have a contact uh, mm -hmm. company. So this, this contract is in Vermont catering service. Do I need to be in Vermont? Nope. To be on that contract. Nope. What would you nope. do? Uh, somebody there. Find somebody in Vermont. Yeah. You're going to find some, some um, caterers, interview and screening. That's all you're doing is project management and putting your cost on top of it. This database right here, USA Spending. Um, let me just go to the. This is where all of your tax dollars are being tracked. Anytime the government awards a contract and or grant, it's still your tax dollars is posted in this database. In our community, we love starting nonprofits. Um, nonprofits are harder. I tell businesses, start um, a for-profit and then start a nonprofit. Nonprofit requires more accountability. And the whole purpose of being in business is being able to take advantage of the tax benefits. I say that because I, I worked on both sides. In my first business, um, the government, I had a contract where I processed grants applications. I was like, oh, this is how that works. So I ended up creating a nonprofit in my father's name uh, with the intention of creating it so if it was broad enough, I could get grants. But the other intention of it was to have it as a tax shelter and it still serve the community. Uh, nonprofits are geared to serving communities. Contracts is just for profit. So in here, it tracks every dollar by state. Um, if you click on the state, um, it'll show you how much money you can just look at FY 2024, how much money that's been awarded in your state for this year, just starting October 1. So it tracks all of your tax dollars. Um, I brought this up so that you can see from one of our other students and how, again, we encourage you to go after the low hanging fruit. This was one of our students. She actually, you can see when she won it and when it ended. It was a, a three month project to provide hotel, hotel space for the government. And if you look here, she's in Georgia. Um, this was the industry code that they used. 
She found the three-day meeting space with the hotel. The hotel's cost was $48,000. You see what she put her cost in, 104000 She won. Right? So that was a $60,000 profit off of a three-month job. That sounds pretty good to me. What y'all think? Sounds great to me. That sounds awesome to me. Something that makes $6,000 a year. <laughs> And look at this. What does that say? The competition details. It was a set aside. And how many offers was received? Just that one. Oh, I didn't have any competition. Wow. She had no, no competition. No competition. <laughs> wow. Uh, and then her second one, she won, um, was in Hawaii. Uh, she went, also did, you can see, um, Miami, Florida, landscaping. The government needed porta parties. She delivered porta parties. Um, over here was a contract in Hawaii picking up their uniforms. Mm -hmm. Off the Navy ship. She just found a dry cleaners to pick it up and deliver. That's when she had a little bit more competition, three. But still, that's still no competition to me. Does that make sense to y'all? Yes, it does. So y'all can visually see. Um, again, when you start looking at um these these websites this is our billion dollar bit, uh, baby i'm so proud of miss labricia and a couple of them we're doing a, we're going to be doing a conference in may where she turned her real estate business into a billion dollar contract but she as you can see she's not saying it's dawson realty it's dawson management so anyone that is in that real estate industry help you to change your name. <laughs> and so when you look at the services that she's offering, it's not based on real estate. Some of it is, but other it's across the board, right? This is how you're not pigeonholing yourself into any industry. This was another one of our students' um, website, right? <laughs> We're helping you create a business model where the government can't tell if it's just you behind the scene or not. Terry, you had your hands raised? Yes, and so um, we can do this now, right, with our website. We don't have to wait until we win to then put this up on here. Uh, I say you have to come through the program until you, you got to understand what's involved in all of this. <laughs> before you create that website. You don't want to put something up if it's not making sense. Understand the process. As you can see here, this was another one of our students. This, they, these are the things that was produced once they completed the program. Um, when is the next program or class start? We, we get ready to go over oh. that shortly. <laughs> but you can see here, you can't tell what size company this person is, can you? No, you can't. It's all That's a nice website too. It's all on, and then she's using her resume to say, "I've done these types of things, not necessarily under the business, but and personally as the owner of this business, I've done certain projects in these areas that I'm selling." Yeah. The whole goal for me is um, we create a community, understand the power of us collectively coming together and how we can reestablish our community because no one's going to take care of us better than us. Um, in here, um, in here, I have a database. We have almost 2,500 2,300 businesses in here. My goal was, again, 
if I'm here in Georgia and I see a contract in California, I can reach out to those vendors or people that are already in this database because now they understand the language, understand we can come together, we can partner and go after opportunities and they can uh, and they can um, find some of the vendors in whatever state that you're looking at the opportunity. I also would encourage you to go to the business too and part of our part of people becoming part of the community is about each one teach one. You have to come back and share. We have to we no longer can afford to hoard the information and the knowledge. So these are some excellent webinars that you can go and listen to uh, as everyone tells their journey in this space. Um, the class is, is three parts. Um, everyone has to start at the same place. Even if you have an existing business, um, we make everyone start at the same place, which is business ready, because you need to understand what type of documentation SBA is going to be looking for and as you begin to apply into these programs. The second module is all about teaming. We put you into teams and you have team deliverables. Um, the third module is all around your business plan and the 8A program, helping you create a strategic marketing plan based on contracts expiring and, and aligning yourself up with those businesses that have those contracts that no longer can keep them. But in this first module, we want you to start looking at those low-hanging fruits so that you can start understanding the process for yourself. Um, the class will start Tuesday, January 23rd. Also, I'm sorry, the price of it is $24.97. If you bring in a second person, that second person's cost is $1,000. And it's a maximum of two, two per team. We have to have a minimum of 15 people to begin the cohort. Um, the next cohort will start Tuesday, January the 23rd from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. You're meeting with a live instructor. Um, <laughs> I'm pulling um, people from both sides. So I'm excited about Ms. Thurman. She's bringing a whole nother depth of experience. She's not only um, ran the Office of Government Contracts in here in Georgia's office, uh, what, what was the deputy director. She's also a contracting officer. So she's able to feed in to things that I may not see from a contracting officer's perspective. Um, and we also have a self-pace, uh, meaning we have 16 pre-recorded classes. Um, you can go at your own pace and you also get to participate in the office hours and the lab sessions. Uh, office hours are held every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's when all the classes come together. And I'm, I'm usually the one teaching the office hours or in the office hours and asking, answering questions and going into more depth of some of the trainers' uh, materials because it's a lot of information. The lab sessions are on Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m., for those who may be technically challenged in navigating through some of the websites and what you're looking for, that's the purpose of the lab sessions. When you complete your first module, these are the items that we're looking for as part of your deliverables, your tangible items. This program is all based on you doing the work. I do not guarantee or promise that you're going to have all of this by the time you complete this program. I can't because you have to do the work. 
Um, the second module, again, this is the team project that comes together and what you have to submit as a team. And then the third module, we're teaching you, uh, I provided sample RFPs, winning proposals um, that I won in that first business. My whole goal is helping you to understand that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, if you're interested in purchasing um, that's crazy. Recognize crazy and run. That's the Q QR code. And with that being said, that concludes my um, webinar. You, know, you all have any questions? I have a quick question. Yes. yes. Um, could you step back regarding, um, I think you had mentioned folks who had uh, had been involved in the legal system. Um, you were saying that unless they have, they're currently on probation, uh, that they are able to participate or register as a business? No, they cannot be on probation or parole. Okay. They cannot be on probation or parole. Okay. But in other words, they, you know, if they've been involved, involved in the system, as long as that's been resolved, they can move Correct. forward. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. They just, it, it, the only difference is they have to provide a fingerprint and it goes to um, FBI to make sure you tell them and disclose in all of your involvements. Um, but I've had, again, people with records as um, uh, businesses in my portfolio. So we don't have to let that stop us. Okay. And does that same rule apply for um, a person who is uh, considering hiring someone uh, to... to um... uh, yes. Um, well, not necessarily, but if you are hiring those individuals and you're putting them on a military base, like for janitorial landscaping services, that might be a little more challenging because they have to do they do have to go through background checks um, if you're having access to federal facilities. But okay. let's say they in IT, uh, no, where IT, um, or, or again event planning or something that doesn't require that individual that job to be have access directly to those base, I mean, those agencies. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? How many weeks um, are the live classes? It's six weeks each. Six, oh, okay. Each and it's, okay. And it's set up like um, school. You have homework and lab assignments each week. <laughs> um, everything is in Google Classroom. So everybody's been held accountable. The methodology works. Um, but again, it's you putting the work together. Any other questions? So what's the biggest difference between that and the self pace it was, it was uh, still kind of on an eighteen week format, or well, you get into bond with your other other people going through it at okay. the same time. So generally, what's been occurring in the last eight years is um, those cohorts still continue to work together, which is my dream. <laughs> After the class is over with, because we cannot do this by ourselves. Ms. Paula, can I just reiterate on that? Because that is absolutely true. I just spoke to uh, one of my classmates the other day. We're about to collaborate. And this was six years ago. Mm -hmm. So you build relationships. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, uh, is the best thing about doing it with the instructor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the instructor led piece is on is it only the business ready section? Um no. it's the whole thing. It's uh, this whole thing. Just think of all this is just broken in three sections. This is the whole program here. It's 18 weeks. Okay. The class that starts uh next week. 
January 23rd. January 23rd. Okay. And may I have, um, it was, the, it was the hub zone or better question is where will this recording be housed? Um, we'll send it out to you um, once we finish the session. So you'll okay. get a copy of this. Okay, thank you. Miss Paula. Yes. This is Carolyn Guillory. How are you again? I I'm doing good, Miss Guillory. I know you're not asking me to uh, promote the class, but um, I just want everyone on here to know that I was a participant of the June cohort and I did the live classes and it's an individual choice, but it's so much information that if you can uh, attend the live sections, um, I would strongly encourage you to do that because it is so much information. And also um, the questions being asked in the class, you probably would miss those on the self-taught classes. Um, just the rapport among, uh, amongst the, the, the um, classmates. And also right now with my classmates, um, we are, uh, we have teamed together and we are going after contracts to uh, solicitations to possibly win contracts. Mm -hmm. And there's like 12 of us. Um, so I would strongly encourage that. And also the lab and the office hours, uh, try to attend those because I am a very analytical, technical person, and I had to use all three. I attended all three. I attended the lecture, I attended the lab, and I uh, attended um, the, the office hour, hour uh, sessions to piece everything uh, together. And uh, it, it, it's just well worth it. And I've learned so much um, with that information um, that um, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. I, I mean, you'll never, you'll never regret um, uh, doing that. And so I, I just want to uh, share that, uh, Ms. Paula. That's all that I have to say. Well, thank you, Carolyn. And what, 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 how did you grow from starting the business ready to now? Can you share that to graduating? Um, can you share that with them? Yes. Well, it's a roller coaster ride, so hang on for dear life. But I did create, um, just get, to give you a little background, I've been a realtor for 23 years. I uh, opened my own brokerage about a year and a half ago. I had a dual career because also I am a um, mechanical engineer. So I've been in, in the environmental engineering arena. Um, I opened up my own LLC after I finally understood that with uh, that uh, general code 541611. Um, but my other primary next code is uh, the environmental aspect uh, of it. Um, and it, it, I'm new, like I said, I just got out of the June cohort class. Um, and so I'm going full fledged into the, uh, the contracting aspect of it to try to win um, the solicitations uh, to move on because this will be a pillar of my uh, mm -hmm. business, but a standalone business. So this will be in addition to my brokerage uh, uh, a firm. And um, I, I, I uh, my sister-in-law is on the, uh, this, uh, that's the reason why I came on because she's on here because she's getting ready to retire and I want her to get into the class mm -hmm. so that she can create her own business so mm -hmm. that she can have money after her retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, because all y'all know retirement, it uh, outlives you. And I don't want her to, I, I want her to be set up for a comfortable retirement. So she's on this call also um, because I'm promoting it to her to try to get involved. But like I said, it, it's something eye awakening and um, the networking is awesome. I also attend a lot of the launchings that Ms. Paula was talking about. Um, uh, and they're all those people, um, those people, the, 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 the people that Miss Paula invite back to the cohorts, they, they are all, uh, uh, alumni of her classes. They are approachable. They give you the, their information if you want to reach out to them. And like she said, that networking database, that's a part of the class where you put your information in there and you can reach out to those people. This is once. This is something that 
we as uh, minorities should definitely take advantage of as far as the networking piece. And also, if you're looking forward to building your legacy and your business, it is definitely another uh, level of income um, for the future. And that's it, Ms. Paula. I don't have anything else. Thank mm -hmm. you, Carolyn, for that unsolicited. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. and one last thing I want to say, Miss Paula is uh, my mother from another mother. I mean, she will take you under her wings. You can definitely call her or any of the in uh, any of the other instructors after you get out of class. They are they do make themselves available, mm -hmm. so it's not like once out of the class, out of mind, out of sight. So definitely appreciate uh, you for that, Miss Paula. Well, thank you. It's all about the future for me. So once you're part of the community, you're part of the community. <laughs> Can I get three takeaways from someone? Anybody? Yeah, uh, so this is Terry King. So for me, uh, my biggest takeaway, like I, um, I, it, this, this, this session gave me so much confirmation that I'm on the right path and it made me breathe easy to learn that it's not as it, as complicated as I thought it as I thought it would be um I'm also working with a group of um ladies and just hearing you talk about collaborating and how you collect, collect can collaborate and the conversations we've been having I was like oh that's wonderful we're not as uh we're not as far as we thought we were um and then there's not as much competition um you know and and until this class you're the very first person and I I agree with you but the, you are the very first person who's experienced in this field that said you don't have to start local right like you don't have to start with your city or your county or your state it's not like a graduation program because you have the knowledge to manage the project and so mm -hmm. just, just and it takes you know being in real estate I you know it takes the same amount of effort and paperwork to do, you know, a thousand dollar deal versus a million dollar deal. So just go after the million dollars. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hill, what was your takeaway? Hi, this is Jamil. I'm his wife. I'll um, mm -hmm. do his takeaways. Um, just that, you know, even with his business to get your family and get your kids involved have your you know your spouse involved i mean even with the um having the separate entities with the sba i thought that was very um very good um just giving us all the jewels we needed with the different certifications that we needed um that we uh, qualify for as being um minorities i think mm -hmm. that's a great takeaway and not limiting your business, creating divisions. I mean, everything you said was was really was really fascinating. So, looking forward to it. And also, I have one question: Is everything, all of you, the payment is due all at once? Correct. That is correct. However, I do have a link with PayPal where they do offer a no interest, no finance. I mean, no interest for six months, where it could be broken up that way. Okay. Okay. And that's on your website? That is. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? One more takeaway and we can close the day. I have a takeaway. Yes, ma'am. Miss Johnson. Yes. Good morning, everybody. This um, session has been remarkable. Um, so the takeaway I have is I started off trying to do contracts in my skill set mm -hmm. but I loved what you said about thinking bigger and we're mm -hmm. building an infrastructure we're building a business so that shifted my mindset immediately so now I'm not thinking about just my skill set but how I can collaborate with others and be able to manage a business mm -hmm. and not work in the business all right you already got an A for the day <laughs> that's good um, again, thank you guys for joining me this morning. Um, happy New Year's. And let's make 2024 our year because we can't control what's going to go on on the outside. 
But we can control and understand that the government is always going to be issuing contracts that's not going to go away. And let's make the commitment to make a difference. Because once you all start winning contracts, then I know your children's children are taken care of. This is the game that we have to be serious about because it's, it's scary out there. With that being said, I'm going to thank you guys and hopefully you'll be a part of the community. Thank you for the information. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.